The institution called Preside was a project. It was not a company. It did not have a bank account. And all the funds were handled by the Minister of Science, Technology, and Innovation with the accounting officer as the PS of the ministry, Mr. Bong, and under the stewardship of the former minister, Honorable Elioda Tumesiji. No funds had been availed to the scientists at that point. So though the funds were appropriated, they had not been released. Honorable Minister is uh, making a response to the committee report, which is uh, a right bona fide, uh, right on the speaker. Unfortunately, she's reading a document not available to members, and uh, I'd rather that we confirm availability. I've tried to scan around, and I don't see it. Uh, if we're supposed to respond to it, uh, may you, right on the speaker, confirm the availability to members that we, we move well with the Honorable Minister, Mr. Right Speaker. Uh, <laughs> Fund vaccines and other related research is highly appreciated. However, as the committee notes, the funding is still low compared to governments that were able to fast track the vaccine research, which was, uh, for example, uh, the, co the committee reports at page 15 points out that the United States and Germany invested approximately 2 billion US dollars and 1.5 billion, respectively, in COVID. Nevertheless, the money which was availed has led to great progress as the committee appreciates throughout its report. Uh, the last point, Honorable Speaker, let me finish, that this, the need for establishing laws and improvements in the operations related to the management and mentoring the research projects. Right, Honorable Speaker, we need to be cognizant that our science is still young, and the committee made some recommendations aimed at putting in place procedures to improve the management and monitoring of such projects. As the Minister of the Sector, I highly welcome these recommendations and I'm going to study them and translate them and implement them. In conclusion, right honorable, I would like to make a specific reference to accusations on my person and uh, the many eminent scientists that I was working with. Uh, the honorable member made a lot of accusations, not only in the house, but also in media, uh, towards me. Uh, it's not your honorable member. Now you're not. We don't want to. Uh, we don't want you to talk about a member. It no. was the house. It is a report of the house. I will do right on it. Yes, I will do that. So, honorable, I have dedicated myself to fighting pandemics and rather dangerous diseases, outbreaks in the pursuit to save lives of people. And the committee demonstrates no money was lost. A lot of progress has, be, has been made, and they actually recommend that more funding be given to our scientists. Thank you very much. I submit, Honorable Speaker. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Members. It's always a very good thing to be remorseful, and I am very apologized. To whoever she had during the process, to whoever she offended during the process, and now she's not saying that you add her money, you add the money to the scientists. To the scientists, not her. When you start shouting like you're in the market, 
And when are you not very far? I am saying, she's saying, add the money to the scientists, like the ones of, of, of COVID X and what. She's not saying give her money. The recommendations that have been made are very clear. She should remove herself from presage. She's now a minister. All the recommendations are very, very clear. And these recommendations must be implemented immediately. And a report must be given to this house within the shortest time possible. We want a treasury memorandum on this report. Honorable members, I am going to... The document is now uploaded. You can look at it. We will allow a minimum debate. Yes. I want to thank the Honorable Minister for procedure. Yes, uh, procedure matter. They cannot be making responses to their own report before they, they have heard from us, Madam Speaker. In practice and procedure, Madam Speaker, that's the point I am raising, that it will be unprecedented that the Chair presents a report before it is debated, he's making clarification. The Chair presented a report. He wants to make, give you highlights to help you in your debate. Maybe his side of diversion from what the minister has presented. It helps you. Honorable. The fact is, when we go to page 45, 491 million was not uh, accounted for. When you go to page 46, 2.06 billion actually uh, went missing. Then when you look at the salaries which were made for preside uh, staff, 1.4 billion. When you look at the appointment letters, only 444 million was paid to the staff. The balance is nowhere to be seen. Uh, as, a, as Parliament, I passed to investigate further on the money that is lost, we'll refer it to IDG. Yes. So when your supervisor stands up, you sit down. <laughs> You sit down. <laughs> Madam Speaker, I have read the, this report and I want to thank the committee. I know I was with Honorable Xavier in the ninth parliament. We missed you in the tenth parliament. Madam Speaker, I want to encourage all my colleagues to read this report and especially page 59. Page 59, actually, we start with page 58, the status of preside. The legal and status. The legal status. And for me, that's where the problem starts. The committee makes very good observations on page 59 and fails to make a recommendation. Because you had the Ministry for Science and Technology. Why did the president choose an entity that has no legal status to be the one to do this very wonderful work? And the committee advised the president that while you have all these powers under the constitution, you are also regulated by the constitution. In fact, for me, the first recommendation of the committee should have been to invoke Article 107. Article 107 of the Constitution is on the removal of the President for abusing office and many other things. It's this ad hocism and arbitrariness, because, and, and I, the Honorable Yonam Singh, I have learned uh, that he was in the Ministry of Science and Technology, and legitimately they felt very bad that uh, while you are assigned the responsibility of science, someone else is being created. And that may have explained the emotion with which the Honorable Yona was, uh, was making submissions. So therefore, for me, Madam Speaker, this parliament has to be bold enough because the Minister Msenero preside are all symptoms of a, a very systematic problem. This parliament enacted the NADS Act 
the president created wealth creation under his brother and told them to go and take over NAD. Chira Moto, same problem. I sit on the budget committee. When we had Chira Moto, they said they, 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 they thought they would manufacture buses and sell them to KCC, but KCC no longer has a market. They, are, they now don't know who to buy their buses. So the biggest recommendation, if we are not going to invoke Article 107, is to advise the president. 107 what? Because it, 107 talks about the removal of, of a president and it gives the criteria why the president must be removed. One, one, one is on abuse of office. Which office has the president abused? If it is Musenero who has abused the office, does that mean it is the president? Two, on misconduct or misbehavior, as he misbehaved. Don't drag the president on this. If the money has been stolen by one of the people that he has appointed, let's, handle, let's hold that person responsible, not the president. Madam Speaker, thank you very much. Colleagues, to look at uh, 59. And the committee says, actually, including giving a judgment, a judgment telling the president to exercise his powers in accordance with the Constitution. But, Madam Speaker, I don't want to engage in a debate with you. On the president, don't engage me. Engage on the House, operation of the House. Um, so, the, the, Madam Speaker, uh, much obliged. I don't want to engage you in a debate, as you said, on the, with the president. So the point that I make, the findings of the committee, and I want to conclude, Madam Speaker, the committee looked at all the issues that the Honorable Yona raised and made the responses. In my view, I think Uganda is a poor country. If the U.S. spending $2 billion on vaccine, countries like Uganda must accept that for them they will buy the excitement that was caused we are going to manufacture vaccine. I actually thought before the end of the pandemic there will be vaccine manufactured by Uganda for our own consumption and neighboring countries. Research is still ongoing. We have the similar problem with other initiatives like banana. So therefore I want to advise government. Where we are weak, we must accept. There is no point in starting an initiative to go and uh, uh, manufacture vaccine for COVID, yet you can buy them at maybe relatively lower prices when you go to buy from the market. Madam Speaker, finally, the accusations, many of the accusations by Honorable Yonam Sims, the committee makes recommendation for further investigation by Auditor General ETC. And I find this a very good report. I only invite colleagues to adopt it, and as you have advised, Madam Speaker, we can have other organs, competent organs of the state to look at uh, what the committee recommended, including the Auditor General. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Thank Speaker. Thank you so much. Okay, three from this side, five from this side. But we need the procedure, the legal instrument in place. Numbers, and I want to thank the committee for bringing them out. Particularly, that two billion shillings was not accounted for. Secondly, that preside, which was the mandate of the now the minister, did not provide recommendations. That project operational funds, project operational funds were not accounted for to the tune of 491 million. The chair did mention it. There is an authorized allocation of project funds. That also comes out very clearly in the report. But, Madam Speaker, what this report falls short of mentioning is actually who is responsible for these irregularities. When you read the report, it does not point to any particular person or individual. And I think it is not deliberate. It is because this is a matter that requires more investigation. 
I was waiting to see in this report to say that so and so is culpable for this anomaly. So and so is culpable for this anomaly. Unfortunately, it is not in this report. It falls short of mentioning who is responsible for what. Who did what and who did not do what. That's why, colleagues, in looking at this report, it is important that we agree. And I want to amplify the proposal by the right rule speaker. The Auditor General is the one who made revelations of an accountability and reallocation, irregular reallocation. We cannot send the same report to the Auditor General, who has already an opinion. I would rather information. 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 Yes. Yana, you don't switch on the microphone and say information. Can you continue? Yes. The, my, my proposal, which I want to amplify, but will speak, is that since the Auditor General did look at this matter, there are accusations of abuse of office, there are accusations of misappropriation, there are appropriations of incompetence. I want to advise and amplify the fact that this is a matter that should be forwarded to the IGG for further investigation. We need an IGG report because the IGG report will then bring out who did what and who did not do what. Otherwise, yes, information. The committee observed that the chairperson preside, Dr. Monica Musenero, acted irregularly by authorizing the environment which was solely the responsibility of the Minister of Finance, Planning and Economic Development. Mm -hmm. In this respect, right honorable speaker, there is an accusing finger being pointed at Dr. Musenero. And that's where the problem is. Read the version on page 48. Listen to their recommendations that all environments between the projects should be made in accordance with Public Finance Management Act. The second one, preside should not reallocate funds. The third one, Minister for, for, for STI should be relieved of her role as chairperson preside to avoid conflict of interest and to align this funding to principles of good governance. Number four, preside to the sports officer should institute a robust monitoring system this recommendation is not in tandem with the observation. It's not in tandem. So if you are making an observation, that observation, right on the speaker, should be in tandem with the recommendation. Why are you shy to say that so and so stole this amount of money? Why? After there, making this observation. There is a procedure matter. The, uh, issue, the issue that uh, Asman is uh, raising that your observation must speak to the recommendations. Yes. Right, 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 speaker. The debate that is on is we are debating on the report. And the debate that we are making on the report, at the end of the day, we will adapt the amendments together with what is in the, in the report. What is important is for us to adapt the report, have the amendments done, together with its amendments, and we need a, 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 a treasury memorandum to that effect. Yes, uh, have you finished? What writing? That your recommendations, your observations must speak to the recommendations. Uh, and right on the being in tandem with the recommendations, I don't think we were protecting anybody. I, I don't want to believe so. Secondly, right on the speaker, even if we are to talk about amending recommendations, you would have one challenge, that the committee had an opportunity to interact with the witnesses, which opportunity we don't have as the entire house. You run short of abusing the rules of natural justice. The committee had an opportunity to put all these issues to the witnesses, to be able to come up with biting recommendations, which they didn't do. Finally, right on speaker, I would also propose, because in one of the recommendations, the committee, and rightly so, 
recommend that preside and these activities should be integrated in the existing scientific institutions. Very good. But one of the things, and I was looking at the methodology, the committee interacted with so many stakeholders. They didn't interact with the people that instituted preside, particularly the president and the prime minister. Because on the 20th of May, the president did direct the prime minister to try and understand why the president had to direct the prime minister to establish a preside and not use the existing scientific institutions. Maybe perhaps we would have known. I, I am a president of the party right on speaker. We presidents are privy to a lot of information. Perhaps the president has information on the existing institution that we don't have. It was important to interact either with the president or the prime minister to understand why they are to preside and not the existing institutions. In the methodology and the people they interacted with, including the minister and the others, because only the president and the prime minister can explain why it was preside and not the existing institutions. And, and that information is not here. So I, I thought that would have also helped in trying to understand the context. Otherwise, right on speaker, this is a very good report. I pray that it should be adopted. Yes, subject to the, re the recommendation of the IGG, looking at the abuse and malpractices here. I thank you. Thank you. Void of emotion. And number two, that there are issues in the report that will probably require the further investigation and the attention of the IGG. That said, I will start my submission from, from there. Right Honorable Speaker, in any investment, research and development is the most expensive aspect. Let alone in sciences, the investment you put in research and development does not immediately yield results. We must recognize that as a house. Secondly, right honorable speaker, for humanity to survive, for a nation to survive, you must invest in science and technology. If you don't invest in science and technology, you are headed to extinction. The United States invested very heavily in the development of the atomic bomb, and that's what saved humanity during the Second World War. So when we come here as a parliament, we must recognize the fact that we should help our government and we should help our scientists invest in research and development. But, right honorable speaker, that's not to say that such investment must not be subjected to accountability. We should always ask questions. We should always ask for uh, accountability. Then, I go to the next issue. How do you account for investment in science and technology. How do you account? How do you account for research? If I present a thesis and I go out to look for data to validate my thesis, I fail to validate the thesis, can you turn around and say I have simply stolen the money? I'm asking a rhetorical question, right, Honorable Speaker. Can I also ask you a question? Accountability from a research institution. Can output act as a, as a product? Yes, yes I do. You gave, as parliament, you gave Ogwang money. Did he produce covid X or no? Yes, right honorable speaker. Right honorable speaker, the answer is yes. It's not a, yes, yeah, yeah, right honorable speaker. Right honorable speaker. Order, Madam Speaker. Right, right honorable speaker. Honorable, honorable Fox. Yes. Honorable Kindly Stitch. <laughs> what we are saying, we want to invest in science and technology and innovation. 
A country that does not invest in that is no country. But at the end of the day, we want to see the results. What are the results that, we are, that are in place? That's what we want. You may not give us accountability in terms of money, in terms of how much you have spent, but give us accountability in terms of the product. Much of light, right honorable speaker. Right honorable speaker, what I was trying to say. a little longer. And because it takes a little longer, we should be certain to know that tomorrow or next year we shall have a product. Because remember, you're, you're, you're budgeting every year for the same. And when you do the budgeting, you're not seeing anything. So that's what members are raising. Okay. I submit, right, Honorable Speaker. Thank Madam you. Madam Speaker, I don't want to Thank point you. Of... Maurice. Oh, Madam Speaker. You're putting order on your own. The line where we give a minister powers to do whatever he wants and is not following the guidelines of parliament, but his or her personal guidelines, that is where the first mistake for this presider and the honorable have begun from. Right, Honorable Speaker, the report was very clear. The, pro the project had sectors where it was spending 164% of the money, yet right on our speaker, during COVID, there was a 40% cut across board. But in this line, they were in position to spend 190%, 160%, and we are wondering where were they getting this money. Thank you, thank so, you. So right on our speaker, as I conclude, I concur with the report one, and as we began, the minister should be accountable, the minister should provide accountability, and at the end of the day, we urge members of parliament, we should share an example that when we give you authority, you must utilize it well by censoring the minister. Thank you. Critical time. When the resource envelope is becoming smaller and smaller, and one, one of us takes the responsibility to squander the money that we need, despite the need. Much as the science, people are beating about the post. Science, science, no, 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 no. We have seen researches being made, and they're already there in the country. I know he's actually the president. He wants this research to be done, but the people he entrusted with the money are not there. They are dishonest. Indeed, she has apologized. After apology, what next? What, what next, really? I am happy she has apologized. The report shows it, Madam Speaker, and I must. Thank you, honestly, for having initiated this selective com select, select committee. It's the same thing is happening on the banana in Ubshen. Another thing is happening on Chiraba. Another one is in the Kasese with the bus man. For, really, we need this money. This lady has squandered the government money. And she's so brave. So the way she talks. It is so disappointing. This country belongs to you people. You are young people. You have a big stake in this country. We want people to utilize money. The lady, she cannot, talk, she cannot hide behind science, science, science. No. There must be accountability in science research. And there was an MOU. She says, what is that company? Preside is no longer there. Now it appears in the budget. Madam Speaker, you must be Things have changed, Madam Speaker. Thank you, thank you, Kimosho. Thank you. Honorable members. No. Honorable members. Let's have respect for everybody. If you cannot have respect and listen to everybody who is speaking, then what are we? We are dishonorable. We are honorable members of parliament. Let's give him his chance. He's an OB. You never know he was maybe beyond an OB. Thank, thank you. Thank you, right honorable speaker. Right honorable speaker. Right honorable that speaker. There, are issues, there are issues of financial mismanagement. It is also very clear that there are issues of illegality.
as far as the framework is concerned. In this country, we know that if you are going to do any research in science, the body is called the National Council of Science and Technology. Right. Do you just act or you act according to the law? I want to put some record right. I have not seen where a minister makes a research proposal to the president because we have National Council for Higher Education, which is mandated by law. By, the, by the way, by then she was not a minister. Whatever it was, because she okay, was a that was a leader by then. So, when someone makes a research proposal to the head of state, it is an abuse. It is a misdirection. That's very, very important. Another issue is that when the committee talks about a reference to the president and the president directing the prime minister, the prime minister could have advised the president that, that I'm reading on page 59, that the president directed that Musenor has written to me, now she wants to do research. This is unheard of. Do we have a research design? Or is it looked at? What are the results? How do we have results? Because accountability and appointment goes with responsibility. So do we have the research results? And if they say that there was no legal status, I am worried that even the Auditor General and the, and the IGG cannot audit an illegal entity. Was it, how, how would it be audited? And for Auditor General to release even money under audit warrants, how did they get the money? So I would think that we go further to know that this one was the, actually a robbery. Disguised. Disguised the robbery because. Uh, Honorable Attorney General, I want to ask a question. When you get a direct. Honorable members, the Honorable Member is bringing an amendment. We, as Parliament, do not have power to direct the President. Read the case of Severino versus Attorney General. The case of Severino versus Attorney General said power, Parliament does not have power. The case of Fox O'Doy versus Attorney General is still on the same. We can only argue the appointing authority. We can only argue the appointing authority, but we cannot direct. So the, the amendment of Honorable Kimosho, is it seconded? Madam Speaker, oh. procedure. If you want a minister and accounting officer held responsible, it is those two. We are not. We are saying the responsible at that time. At that time. Yes. He Thank you. Just fine. Thank you, Reverend Speaker. Member, I want Abed. Abed. Honorable Abed. Honorable members, let's have respect for each other. Let's debate on these things. Uh, we will be seen, right, Honorable Speaker, as if we are killing innovation. From, from the report, from the report, right, Honorable Speaker, it is very clear that there are issues of financial... Honorable members. Honorable members. When you start making your order... The, card, the requirement of members of parliament while in the chamber to put on masks... To the end, Coming to the report that was written by the Honorable Speaker, this shows that the Honorable Minister failed to carry on her assignment. I totally agree that the Honorable Minister should be censured. 
as I also find where to, to how to carry on my assignment. Right, Honorable Speaker, you would have found this ministry very vibrant if the Honorable Musenero was doing her work the way she was doing. Okay. I'm totally in corridors finding how to do my work as an alternative minister. And I felt right, Honorable Speaker. So the fact that we have this report, right, Honorable Speaker, now, I request that it is the time that we have to put this ministry to order. Right, Honorable Speaker, the President is arguing the government to increase salaries of scientists. Where are we going to find them? This is the very ministry that would have promoted scientists. We are looking out for research, funding the research and development, because we want to create employment for the youth. So, right, Honorable Speaker, as the minister in the alternative government, I strongly agree that the to conclude. As a shadow minister. Um, right, Honorable Speaker, minister. my prayer is kindly put, let's use Parliament to put this ministry to order. So that we can have this country get the output from this office. Right, Honorable Speaker, as I've alluded, I'm very vibrant and willing to serve this country. But I'm rendered uh, useless because Honorable my colleague is not doing her part. Thank you. Censure coming from, is it in the report, in the what? But I also made a motion. I add that in addition to what has been written. That is not how they move a motion. Right, Honorable Speaker. I can move a motion. Yes, right, Honorable Speaker. I move I'm that saying, we amend. Madam. Yes, right, Honorable Speaker. I am saying that is not how they move a motion of censure. If you want to move a motion of censure, there is a procedure that you follow. Not just that one that you are doing it. So if you are going to follow the procedure, well and good. But that is not how they do it in the house. Your leader will guide you on what you can do. Right, Honorable Speaker, it was just enough. Because if you read into the report, the minister was getting almost 35 to 40 billion shillings, but as we talk now, they are getting 3 billion, which means there are some jobs that were lost, and this yes, was done there. intentionally to kill. To dare. And uh, this house owes them a duty. Uh, if their findings are watered down. We shall have empowered a culture of impunity. We would have empowered a culture of I don't care. And all of us will be culpable, right on the speaker. Right on the speaker, the need for science and technology in this country cannot be overemphasized. All of us would desire to see this country progress on a clear path where innovators and scientists guide our daily thinking and the path to development. And the Reverend Speaker, we have a national research agenda. And I would like to invite the rural members to be interested in appreciating this. NDP3 is very unequivocal on what science should look like. And therefore, in debating this, we must also focus on whether we are actually on the right path. Investment in science, regional speaker, should not be just motivated by a very bit of money, but by actually a very bit of skills and the commitments to invest those skills in a particular output, regional speaker. The Honorable Namuga, the Shadow Minister for Science and Technology, able observe, Dr. Honorable Speaker, this House resolved inter alia that this ministry resides in the office of the President. For some reason, and the Prime Minister should explain, why are we debating this ministry to be under State House? Was it defiance? Is it part of the impunity that is intubating in this ministry? There is a resolution on the, on the record, on the hands of the Speaker, that the ministry resides in the office of the President not in the State House. State House is the personal residence of the President and his family. And we are voting funds for it. We are very clear on purpose and intention. So we need to find out from the Prime Minister whether Parliament was defied on that resolution, right on the Speaker. 
honorable law. I thought the board is under the office. In complete disregard of an existing parliamentary resolution, right on the speaker, and uh, we expect the prime minister to to make clarification. If there was a defiance, we find a way of dealing with it, right on the speaker. Right on the speaker, I have no personal grudge with the honourable Dr. Msenero, the former CEO who preside and the now minister. Her transfiguration from being a CEO presided to a minister does not in a way absolve her of being accountable and being held responsible for her then role and the transfiguration into a minister. I have read clearly the indictments in the report on violent of funds, on failing to account for funds, and one of the most unfortunate developments, right on the speaker, was that the, the minister was trying to rebuttal the report in her statement. Probably should we have asked for a privileged statement to respond to the issues, to the allegations. The Honorable, the then Minister of Science, Dr. Ryoda, has, has his own troubles, and he must be whatever he is to really get out of his hiding hole to come and also account. The kind of minister has her own issues as a former CEO of Reside. For that, she must really be uh, properly indicted by this House and held accountable. What other speaker? When ministers are given this duty, they need to understand that they are doing it on behalf of the taxpayer. And accountability should not be a matter we are debating in this House. That preside was given public funds without legal status. The Attorney General will advise this House. Whilst it's a matter that the Public Finance Management Act and the Constitution can accommodate, and therefore should allow it to float. And the people should be lining up the president, and the president will invoke his executive powers to dole out public funds, and people do not account. But, Honorable Speaker, I'm also aware that a lot of people have been claiming to be researching using public funds. And the law is very clear on using public funds to undertake research. Probably the Minister of Finance would advise us how many patents are in your custody on account of public funds voted on research. Because the law on ownership of discovery is very clear. Whoever funds owns that the Minister of Finance have a catalog of patents that are in your custody by virtue of funds voted by the taxpayer to finance them. It is one of the voids that people are exploiting to use public funds to say they are working so hard on this and that, right on the speaker, and we are being fleeced as such payers. Right on the speaker, right on the speaker, this house should have the courage and support this house to invoke the provision of Article 118. And uh, for the Honorable Dr. Msenero, holding a public office calls for a higher level of personal, personal integrity. And unfortunately for you, whether you were used, whether you used the others, Article 118 is available, but you are free to preserve your name and say, I have jumped. In the circumstances, the report is very clear, Mr. Speaker, on violations of uh, key provisions of the Public Finance Act, including failing to account for 2.06 billion shillings. So, what do you do about that? Is it just a happy go around to say people are researching? Right, Mr. Speaker, as I conclude, we are lucky to be in the budget cycle. This particular vote 
should not be given public funds without clarity as to how public funds are voted in that area. And I wanted to be one of the uh, many majority of speaker that um, in the face of the dark cloud surrounding this area, until there's a clarity as to how previously funds voted were used, they should not receive money. Public universities, as well as speaker, are doing a lot of research, and they do not have money. We should send that money to public universities, that the professors there, with the cool heads, with the sense of direction, can research, incubate researchers, and help younger people to get a very clear sense of direction and taking research. The, the, their research components are unfunded priorities over several financial years. They should receive this money, and the Honorable Dr. Msenero goes back for re-intubation as we think again for the direction of science and technology in this country, Honorable Speaker. I beg to submit. In State House, because State House is supposed to be for private residents unless with the recommendation of the president, and that is still on the staff, that is under Article 1722. It refers to that. So uh, I don't know what could have happened with the budget committee, because this house made a recommendation that uh, the vote should be, uh, it should be under vote 002 uh, budget. Budget. Thank you, right, Honorable Speaker. It's true when we, the ministry was abolished, the money was, but I don't know what happened in the course of execution of the budget. The Minister of Finance can guide the House. The money again went back to vote 002, State House. And as I speak now, the same budget again is still under what 002, State House, not what 001, Office of the President, as indicated, as passed by Parliament. So we have that challenge, but the Minister can guide. Honorable Minister, can you guide? Come Madam Speaker and Honorable, it is true I moved the motion here to move money from Ministry of Science and Technology to vote 002 under Office of the President. 001 under Office of the President. And Madam Speaker, since Honorable Mudimi raised uh, a matter when I was consulting on a matter which we are also about to deal with, I want to propose that I be given time to respond adequately. Now, you want to act as Speaker? Now, if somebody is asking for time to give us information, let's give him time. Because, first of all, there's already, there's already, a, a law has already said, we should not give, if, the, if they are going to be under state house, unless they are under the prime minister. So we need that information. Office of the president, unless it is under the office of the president. Because you know under State House it is classified. We cannot audit. Madam Speaker, was to create a vote under the office of the President. The same way you have internal security, external security, AIDS Commission. It was not just for sending money to office of the President. The decision by this parliament was that uh, money will go under the office of the president, but under a vote. I don't know what consultation the Honorable Mr. Asim needs to make. Was the vote created? Did money go there? We are in the budget process, sit on the Commission on the Budget. 
And, and that's why I said, Madam Speaker, there is something that this parliament may not do. All these Musasis are victims. You deal with a president who has turned his bedroom and sitting the room into created, an office. Was the vote created under which ministry? We agreed, we've agreed as a house. There are some burning issues like abuse of office, like money which has been lost, that we should refer this to be to IGG and give IGG three months. And when we give IGG three months, we report back on the action taken. Three, we have an amendment from Honorable Kimosho that has been moved and seconded. Four, can I hear from government? I want to commit that government is going to study the recommendations in the report and also involve the relevant departments like the IGG and come back to the House after three months with the Treasury Memorandum. STI should move from presidency to State House. When the Honda Minister came with the team, we advised the minister to go to speaker's office for guidance so that information is brought to this house. So for now, we are operating based on the decision of this house. We have not yet changed. Thank you, right Honourable Speaker. Thank you. An approval on a supplementary expenditure authorized by the minister within the 3% already expended. Right Honourable Speaker and Honourable Colleagues, I did opine that under Article 156.2b of the Constitution and, Article, and Section 25 of the, of the Public Finance Management Act, a supplementary ex expenditure not exceeding 3% need, does not require the approval of Parliament because Parliament under the Act has already lifted that requirement. Right Honourable Speaker, there was a request that why are supplementary estimates showing some spent within 3% late before Parliament. I did opine, right Honourable Speaker and Honourable Colleagues, that again under Article 156.2b and Section 12 of the Budget Act, it is a requirement that even the money is spent within the 3% limit are presented to Parliament. The question there, the next question, right Honourable Speaker, was where Parliament has declined to approve the supplementary expenditure in one above how then should that expenditure be treated? I did opine that that requirement, that cannot happen because Parliament has by law authorized the Minister to make the expenditure of 3% and to be not only, uh, it will be illegal for Parliament to reject what they have already authorized. Right, right Honourable Speaker, the next question was, I didn't get that question. Oh. Does the act of disapproval of that expenditure offend the PFMA? I said yes. It does, it does offend the PFMA because the, the law has already allowed, Parliament has already allowed the 3% expenditure. Whether a supplementary appropriation bill should automatically capture amount expenditure spent within the 3% legal limit, irrespective of whether the amounts were approved by Parliament, and, there, and therefore are not contained in the parliamentary resolution. Right Honourable Speaker and Honourable Colleagues, the 3% expenditure over and above what was approved by Parliament was by law under Article 153, Section 32 of the PFMA not expected to be in the bill or in the Act of Parliament. And therefore it follows that the supplementary expenditure within the legal limit of 3% is part of the supplementary expenditure which should automatically be captured in the Supplementary Appropriations Bill. Whether it is in the, the next question, right Honourable Speaker, is whether it's in the spirit of the law for the Minister to indicate in the same supplementary schedule that 3% legal limit has been partially used for the supplementary funding and request for additional funding over and above 3%. 3%. Right Honourable Speaker, I did opine that the 3% expenditure is a discretion that Parliament left to the Ministry. 
and how it is to be expended, they have to only come and account for it to the Parliament at, at the time of the Supplementary Appropriations Bill. Whether the Supplementary Appropriations Bill should replicate figures or amounts contained in the relevant parliamentary resolutions or rather reflect amounts released by the Ministry and expended by the agency. The Supplementary Appropriations Bill, my Right Honourable Speaker and colleagues, should reflect all supplementary, including all supplementary approved by the Minister within the 3% limit, as well as any other supplementary expenditure approved by Parliament over and above the 3% limit. So the, the, the Supplementary appropriation Bill should have the 3%, the, the amount approved by Parliament, and also any 3% that has been used by the Minister. Whether the Minister for Finance has power to suppress allocations to votes within an approved national budget without express approval of Parliament, uh, I did opine that no, suppression means putting down something that is stopping it, re uh, removing it. We just need to be careful, honorable colleagues and members, there is a difference between suppression and cash flow management. Because you may have less money than is required to meet uh, your entire financial requirement, budget requirement, and therefore Minister of Finance may have to allocate the resources depending on the um, available resources. However, they cannot, the Minister cannot suppress a budget that has been passed by Parliament. I submit, right Honourable Speaker, I did issue the opinion in writing on 13th April and I beg to lay the same. Please lay. Thank you. Yes. Uh... Right Honourable Speaker, I thank you for this opportunity. Right Honourable Speaker, we find the opinion of the Attorney General very highly not well grounded in the law. I'm not a lawyer, but I have this noble duty to have a rebuttal of the Attorney General's opinion. Right Honorable Speaker, if we give in to what the Attorney General wants us to do, we would straight away turn this Parliament into a rubber stamp. But I have written a rebuttal to him, which I furnished your office, for which I will read verbatim for him to know that he's, he's uh, encroaching on the very, very essential powers of this parliament. And, and, and it has been a very contentious issue over time. And uh, we must guide it carefully. The gist of the Attorney General's position. The Attorney General, in his six-page opinion, contends that one, supplemental expenditure authorized by the minister within 3% of the approved budget, annual budget and already expended, does not require parliamentary approval. That's the gist of his submission. Two, spending of 3% expenditure without approval of parliament is permitted under section 25 of the Public Finance Management Act and the Budget Act. Remember the Budget Act was not repealed. Some sections of it were left out. The Minister is only required to lay in Parliament the estimates of the authorized expenditure within four months after the funds have been spent in line with Article 156, Section 56, Subsection 2 of the Constitution. Parliament is only authorized to scrutinize the 3% expenditure and make recommendations, if any, to the executive. That's what you contended. This approval of supplementary expenditure within 3% of the approved annual budget is not a legal requirement. In the event the supplementary expenditure are found unlawful, Parliament may only make recommendations whoever is found culpable for the unlawful spending and not approval. The Minister may submit to Parliament requests for supplementary expenditure before exhausting the 3% supplementary expenditure limit. Parliament has discretion on such requests to approve or reject it. Our Parliament 
has powers to approve or reject supplementary expenditure that are above 3% supplementary expenditure. And lastly, supplementary appropriation bill should not automatically capture the 3% supplementary expenditure authorized by the Minister and other supplementary expenditures approved by Parliament. Right Honourable Speaker, that's what the Minister contended, and I want Parliament to carefully listen to our observation. One, following the scrutiny of the Attorney General, the following observations are made. One, the Attorney General is silent on the provision of Regulation 18, subsection 3 and 6 of the Public Finance Management Act as, a, as amended, that I require the Minister to approve the 3% 3, 3 supplementary budget only when it is unavoidable or unforeseeable. The burden of judgment guided by, guided by the regulation is placed upon the Minister and is accountable for the approval act. Regulation 18 of the Public Finance Management Act has amended the state that one, where in respect of any financial year, money is expended for any purpose in excess of the amount approved for that purpose, or for purpose for which no amount was ap appropriated by the Appropriation Act, a supplementary estimate showing the amount required or spent, as the case may be, shall be laid before Parliament. And in the case of excess expenditure, within four months after the money is spent, five, Parliament may approve a supplementary appropriation or the Minister may approve a supplementary budget, as the case may be, where the supplementary expenditure is unavoidable or unforeseeable. Six, for purposes of this regulation, unavoidable, I don't want to define it for the Minister, you know, unavoidable means an expenditure that cannot be postponed to the next year's budget, and foreseeable does not include any expenditure that was foreseen at the time of budgeting, an expenditure which is in excess of the approved budget of a vote, and which is not in accordance with this, this section, shall be treated as a loss to public funds as approved, as provided for under Section 79.1 of this article. In line with Article 153 of the Constitution. ITG, we are also including the amendment of Honorable Kimosho. I now put a question under the report of Select Committee on Science, Technology, Innovation and COVID-19 related research be adopted with amendment on taking the report to IGG and amendment from Honorable Kimosho. Those in favor say and the contrary nay. The eyes have it. And the Honorable Members of the House. I want to appreciate this opportunity for me to give a comment on the report. Right Honorable, I beg your indulgence to make a few clarifications which are not in the report, which will help the members to understand the report. Um, whereas uh, from 2020, the report is reporting on 2019-2020 up to June 2021 or 2022. I was a senior presidential advisor in uh, 2020 up to 2021 June. I was appointed minister in June 2021. Most of the report refers to matters where there was a substantive minister, Honorable Elioda Tumweside, and a permanent secretary to the Ministry of Science, Technology, and Innovation called Mr. O.O. Ebon. So in my report, I'll refer to those. 
Right Honorable, now allow me to summarize my report. On the 11th of May, the report of the Select Committee on Science, Technology and Innovation on COVID-19 related research for the financial year 2019-2020 to financial year 2021-2022 was read out in Parliament and laid on the table. The terms of the Select Committee are listed on page one of the committee report. Uh, these terms of the Select Committee are as follows. One, to establish the progress in the development of a locally manufactured COVID-19 vaccine. Two, to establish the amount of funds so far released for the research, innovation, and COVID-19 vaccine development. Three, to establish how effectively such funds were utilized. Four, to establish the challenges faced in the development of the COVID-19 vaccines and medicines. Five, to inquire into any other matters incidental to the above. And six, to recommend a way forward for Parliament. Right. We have all those terms in our report. Can you give us a summary of what on, on of her response? And the report is available. Could she kindly present uh, the report? And I want to request members to avoid emotions when debating on these things. Let's avoid emotions. Let's debate in a sober manner. 